Performative workplace diversity and inclusion programs, sometimes referred to as diversity, equity, and inclusion, have failed people of color in general, but Black women in particular, they have failed us miserably in areas of microaggression. According to McKinsey and Company's annual Woman in the Workplace report, it's the 2021 report, Black women were four times more likely than their white counterparts to experience uh, microaggressions in the form of being questioned about their capacity or their capabilities. I'll link the report in the description box below. Hi, my name is Colette and I created this channel as a safe space with you in mind. I help black women to embrace new seasons of their life with purpose and joy by pursuing resilience, practicing self-leadership, and by pivoting towards entrepreneurship. If anything I've said resonates with you, welcome to the channel. At this time, I encourage you to get you something to write with, to take notes, a pen, a paper, your uh, note, your iPad, phone, whatever you use, and get comfortable, we're gonna talk. You are gonna see me look down because I am looking at my notes and I wanna get this information to you and not miss anything. So what are microaggressions? Before we go there, let me just provide a little historical context about the term microaggressions. The term microaggressions was coined by Dr. Chester Middleton Pierce in the 1970s. Dr. Pierce was an African-American psychiatrist and he was a tenured professor at Harvard Medical School. And while now the term includes other marginalized sectors of the population, initially microaggressions was focused on the experiences of black women uh, as it relates um, to gender-based and uh, race-based type of behavior. So what are microaggressions? Simply put, microaggression is an action or a comment that conveys a negative message or statement about a marginalized person or a group of people. These disparaging actions or statements, they may be verbal, they may be nonverbal, they may be intentional, they may be unintentional. So you may say, Colette, how can a statement uh, be nonverbal? Body language, as we know, body language is what 90% of what, how we communicate. So let me give you an example. You are a black woman. You get into an elevator, there is another person in the elevator who happens to be a white woman. Just the two of you are in the elevator. You get in the elevator, as you get in the elevator, she grabs her purse and gets into the, she clutches her purse and gets into the corner. That's an example of nonverbal microaggression. And men, like men, we, we hear about them experiencing that all the time. Okay, so using that same example, you, a black woman, get in the elevator. Again, this happens to be a Caucasian woman. She's in the elevator. It's just the two of you in the elevator. As you get in the elevator, you're minding your own business. She says, I've never seen you before. Now, the emphasis here is on the word you. Then she says, do you live here? Again, the emphasis is on the word you. So when we're talking about microaggression, you know, again, sometimes it's intentional, sometimes it's not intentional. Maybe the person just wanted some information. Maybe the person was being nosy, we don't know. But microaggressions can be intentional or unintentional. The important thing is the impact that it has is the same. It can be demoralizing. It can be othering. 
you know, it's, it's a problem. And I'm talking about microaggressions today. Other marginalized groups, they may experience microaggression, they do. But in today's video, I'm going to focus on black women um, and how they experience microaggression in the workplace. Some people falsely believe that because we've had a black president, um, we live in a post-racial society. I honestly did not realize that some people actually thought that way. Getting back to microaggression, a lot of microaggression that black women uh, face in the workplace is characterized by subtle put downs from white females. Now you may say, Clet, you not like white females? No, I, I don't have anything against white uh, females. I'm just saying what the facts say, what the studies show and what I've personally experienced and not just white females, but most of the microaggression that the studies concentrate on have to do with female to female, white to black. And the purpose of a lot of these put downs, they're designed to other you, okay? To other you, to, 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 to make sure that you understand that you are not a part of the normal group, okay? Sometimes these are blatant, you know, they're, they're sometimes they're very blatant. You know, I remember I was, um, I think we were going to lunch. I was going to lunch with a coworker. She's white. And she, she had told me she had taken a class on slavery or something like that. Does a lot of studying about genealogy. And she made the comment Hmm, my family might have owned your family. She said it just like that. So I'm not going to get into what I said back because my Aunt Charlene might be watching and my mom. Um, I, di I didn't do any curse words or anything like that. But by, when I responded, she understood what I was saying. And that's what I'll, I'll leave it at that. But yes, the person made that comment to me, to my face, while we were going to lunch and felt okay saying it, okay? So other times microaggression can be settled. You know, for example, you're in a meeting and it's a heated discussion about whatever. Everybody's heated. Voices are loud, elevated, you know, people are talking over one another and, you know, it's just... There's a bunch of banter going back and forth, nothing personal. Folks are just trying to get their, their point of view across, their ideas across, what have you. So after the meeting, you are pulled to the side and told, hey, you know, I noticed in the meeting you were, you were overly aggressive. And of course, I just said that everybody's talking. Everybody's loud. Everybody's voice is a little elevated. People are excited, what have you. So you're told this, but you're not giving any examples of what that looked like. So then you say, well, wait a minute. You know, John, he was talking loud and he was waving his arms and he talked over this person. And Lauren, she said A, B, C, and D. And I haven't said anything or done anything different than John or Lauren. And then the response is, well, John, you know, he's just passionate. You know, that's, John is John, he's just passionate. And then the response is, oh, Lauren, you know, Lauren, you know how assertive she is. She's, all, she's, been, she's always been that way, you know. So that's an example of a subtle microaggression. So you think about it and you look at John and Laura, they may belong to another marginalized group, they may not, but Two things they are not, they're not black and they're not a woman, okay? You think about the whole thing and usually what this has to do is othering you, okay? A lot of times as black women, we're the only one in these spaces. We're the only one in these spaces. Microaggression is a form of gaslighting. In many cases, this gaslighting is designed 
to silence you, to make you subservient, to put you in your place, to actually remind you of your place, that you are thinking you're up here, and but you're really down here. The old people used to say they want to bring you down a notch, okay? A lot of gaslighting, lots of gaslighting is connected to microaggression, or I should say microaggression is connected to a lot of gaslighting, okay? In one of the academic articles that I read for this video, um, the scholar, um, she talked about the policing of black women's tones. Meaning, you know, she put in her article that her research showed that they were told, hey, it's not what you said, it's how you said it, okay? How you said it, but they can never give you a description of how you said it. Now, I have a deep voice. I've always had a deep voice and I have a loud voice. I've always had a loud voice, okay? That's just my voice. I have tried to lower it. I've tried to soften it, all of that. It, 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 it is what it is, you know? So as black women, we're spending a lot of time trying to come down into this box that people wanna put us in so that we don't appear this way or we don't seem this way. Meanwhile, John and Laura, they can be passionate and assertive, and it's all good. It's all good, okay? I'm not going to talk about it here, but there, is, there are a lot of studies that show that Black women, because of this type of stereotyping and this microaggression, because basically when you're told that you're overly assertive, sometimes that comes off. And I've even had people say, you seemed angry. And we all know where that's going. We all know what, what that's about. You know, the, the angry black woman trope. We already know about it, you know. And so I, I'm not going to get into a lot of details about that trope. We're all familiar with it. And many of us have tried our best not to be labeled as the angry black woman. You know, but <laughs> it happens. We're, we're labeled anyway, okay? So I'm not gonna get into the details about other normal microaggressive uh, comments that we received, um, like, wow, you're so articulate, or you write so well. I have heard that over and over and over again. I'm so articulate. What did you expect me to be? I write so well. How did you expect me to write? It's 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 baffling to me, you know. Um, and I'm not even going to get into the, the little ridiculous ones. Can I touch your hair? You cannot touch my hair. No, you can't touch my hair. OK. Uh, I want to also talk about a form of microaggression that I just this that I just learned about. Actually, I know it happens, but I didn't know the name of it. It's a phenomenon um, that I, was it a Forbes article that I read about, and I'll link that article in the description box. But it's called pet to threat phenomenon, and um, in the article, uh, Dr. Keisha Thomas she characterizes what pet to threat is and she gave the example that it's it looks like a white male mentor um taking on a female a black female as a mentee and kind of taking her under his wing and showing her the ropes and you know kind of uh coaching her and training her and just helping out that's the pet part and then as the black woman, um, she builds her competencies or experience or what have you, and um, all be you know, not all, but you know, related to this coaching and mentoring that she received from this white male, and now he's looking at her like she's a threat. Okay, so what happens is. In the, in, the, in the pet to threat phenomenon, the mentor who was open with information, who was uh, generous with time, now begins to pull back 
okay, and start putting limits on access to information to him, to him personally, and starts to drop little drop little little gossipy tips about you know this person does that. Now this is the person that this person was mentoring, okay. You sure you want to consider this? You sure you want to consider that? in an effort to sabotage this person's career that he has mentored, okay? That's the threat. And they, they've done some research on it, and it's a thing, and I won't say that I have not experienced it. I have experienced it, but it has not always been a white male, okay? So this pet to threat phenomenon, I believe, I believe, and I've seen, and I've experienced it um, where other people have been mentors. Other marginalized people have been the mentor, okay? So again, I will link that article um, in the description box below and um, you can check it out if you find it interesting. Uh, you know, it's it's, something and you know i have a lot of resources down there because my channel is to educate and inform okay my videos could probably be a lot shorter but i just try to give you the information so you can have it microaggressions can be very difficult the cumulative uh, assaults can be draining in fact some people refer to microaggressions as death by a thousand cuts, okay? I've included a link to a video uh, in the description box. Um, it's called Microaggression as Bee Stings. I think that's a great, great video to understand. And I know most of us who are black women who have experienced microaggression in the workplace and other places, we understand how it feels to be um, to deal with all of this, uh, these insults on a daily basis. You know, um, it's not just the one, it's not just the two. You're dealing with it here, you're dealing with it there, and it's, it's all over and it's a lot. So I put it there because I wanted this channel and this video to kind of be a resource so that if folks are talking to somebody who may not understand microaggressions and how it impacts folks, um, they can have a place to kind of, you know, to, to take people. So what can you do? Um, one of the things that Dr. Thomas said, uh, encourages folks to do as it relates to microaggression is to establish a personal advisory board. And um, that advisory board can include trusted advisors, mentors, peers, et cetera. Now, if the mentor that, had, that was in the pet to threat situation is you know obviously you don't want to include them um but a peer you know and i i i would caution you to be careful there as well you know kind of be careful who you put in your advisory circle i had a circle an advisory a circle advisory board i didn't even know that's what it was called a personal advisory board but i had people that i went to one of them was my aunt uh, my aunt charlene i went to her uh, her background um, was very valuable for me. Um, information she provided me was um, was great because my aunt was able to um, help me in a in a in a practical sense, you know, as far as the workplace was concerned, and a spiritual sense, which helped my soul, you know. Um, I also talked to people, um, black women, who were, you know, um, in higher positions. Um, I could ask them and I, and I would go to them with the mindset that am I looking at this the wrong way or am I putting tens on this or am I being too sensitive? I always went about it that way because sometimes, you know, uh, we may, because we're looking at it from our own history and our own perspective, sometimes things look a way that they may not necessarily be, okay? so. Um, I always, I want to try to give people the benefit of the doubt that it's unintentional, that these comments are, were not meant to be hurtful. Um, sometimes you know when they're meant to be hurtful, like the slave, um, the slave comment, okay? Okay, either 
you were trying to be hurt for, you're just ignorant, you know, but after our discussion, you're not ignorant anymore, not to say that to me. Um, but sometimes people don't know. And sometimes people don't know that they don't know, you know, so that's, that's number one, establish a personal advisory. Number two, create op outside opportunities. Why? Because sometimes these microaggressions, you know, it, it doesn't stop with the microaggressions. Sometimes it's, you know, character assassination and different things. And I'll talk about that in another video when I talk about toxic workplaces. But I was able to create um, some opportunities outside of the organization that helped to fuel my um, desire to continue learning and putting some of the things that I have learned into practice. And so very proud of some of that stuff. I won't go into it in this video, but you know, it helped people and I'm happy to hear about that. Number three, document, document, and document some more. Document, okay? And I know that can be hard. I know it's a pain in the butt because you gotta think about it, but just document the stuff as it goes. Create a, lit, create a file, an electronic file and a physical file and just document it. Something, doesn't sit right with you or it makes you go, hmm, document it. You never know if you might need it later. You don't know if you might have to turn this over to a third party. You just don't know. Um, I've mentioned in prior videos, uh, a lady by the name of Anne Marie, she's an HR consultant. Her YouTube channel is called Bald Girl Will Travel. She did a phenomenal video on documentation and how to do it. Um, I will link that video in the description box below. It's a very good video. Um, I, I, I looked at it and I agree with all the things that she said. I personally, um, in addition to what she says, I don't do my documentation. Uh, I didn't do my documentation at work all the time. Uh, the other thing I would add is to maybe uh, keep a journal, you know, keep a journal um, about the situation that's happening to you. It could be very helpful. Um, number four, report inappropriate behavior or comments to your supervisor or human resources. I'm telling you to do that, but I do want to let you know that this may not always work. And Marie also does another video called H Human Resources is not your friend. I've experienced that. I have felt that um, it is what it is. I would be remiss if I didn't tell you, you know, uh, this information so that you can manage your expectations. You still want to do it. I am number five. I'm a proponent of research. So I encourage you to review your employee handbook as it relates to, you know, harassment, because microaggressions is a form of harassment. It really is. Discrimination, it is a form. In some cases, it could be a form of discrimination. You know, it is to me because it is gender-based and racial-based. So, you know, look into your state's uh, sources about gender and racial discrimination on the job. And I'm not gonna go into details about that because I'm not an attorney. Um, number five, excuse me, number six, I would encourage you for your own mental health, your own physical health to talk to somebody, a therapist, somebody off the job, um, a counselor, a pastor, somebody that you can talk to, um, because it, it can be pretty overwhelming for you. Um, number seven maybe find a way to switch from the work person to the home person. I remember this police officer saying that one of the ways that he switched from being a police officer to coming um, into the house and dealing with his family is he would touch a tree. I think he said he just touched, I don't know how many seconds, but he held onto that tree and he transferred all the energy that, or whatever thoughts, whatever that he dealt with, experiences, things he saw for the day, he transferred it to that tree and then he walked into his house. I never forgot that. So that might be good. And then the last one, you might have to consider other employment opportunities. You know, unfortunately, sometimes it comes down to that. 
you may have to, to leave that job if the microaggressions continue. Uh, I'm not going to tell you to leave a job. I would not do that because I uh, think it's a personal decision. But at the same time, I am never going to encourage somebody to stay on a job where they're getting harassed and that harassment has been harmful to them. I'll never do that. What I will say is if you decide to leave your job, I did create a video that gives resources um, of what you may consider using uh, if you decide to leave a job. And I'll link that in the video below, um, excuse me, in the description box below. Okay. So I have discussed and will continue to discuss some pretty heavy, um, pretty difficult, and for some emotional topics. And while I am not a licensed uh, therapist or medical provider, in alignment with this channel's purpose to educate and perform, I have included links to several mental health resources in the description box below. One of them um, is Therapy for Black Girls. Therapy for Black Girls has a therapist directory. I've never used Therapy for Black Girls. I've never used any of the therapists in their directory, so I'm not you know, pushing this on anybody. It's a personal choice. I just wanted to provide you with the information. A therapy for Black Girls, um, they have a therapy or, um, excuse me, a therapy directory. They also have an internet sister support circle. Uh, what I like about it is ex is exclusively Black women. Um, that's important, I feel, because, you know, a lot of things we go through, it's hard to explain to somebody who is not in our shoes. They also provide other uh, resources and also I, they also have a podcast as well, but I have their, the link in the description box as well as to other uh, mental health resources. I also want to mention that July is B.B. Moore Campbell National Minority Health Awareness Month. The late B.B. Moore Campbell was a mental health activist. She was a journalist. She was a mother. And she was one of my favorite authors. I loved her work. I will link resources um, to provide information or more information about the B.B. Moore Campbell National Minority Mental Health Awareness Month in the description box below. You hear a lot of people just refer to it as the minor as minority uh, national minority health mental health awareness month, but the full name is BB Moore Campbell. Okay, so I wanted to make sure that I provided those resources to you. Um, if you have enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And maybe it was too hard to enjoy. If you found the information helpful, give it a thumbs up and share it to somebody who could benefit. You might decide to share it with your boss or some people who don't know what microaggressions are. Um, this really helps the algorithm um, when you give it the thumbs up. If you like this video um, and you want to see more content like it, this video is, I think, the fourth installment of my uh, Black, Woman, Black Women Get Out series. If you want to get the information or you want to be notified about uh, new videos that I uh, upload, should be sure to uh, subscribe and to hit the notification bell. Um, if you have comments about what I've provided, put it in the suggest in the comments box. I look at all the comments and I try to respond to all the comments. So until my next video, which I try to drop videos on Tuesdays and Thursdays, we'll talk. Take care.